Hi! In this episode we're finally gonna find out if the old Antati pump we installed in episode 1 is able to overcome the 61 meters height difference between the stream and the water tank back in the house. This time my uncle came to help me out. Here you can see him breaking through the undergraft with a chainsaw. He's doing all the hard work while I'm here recording and doing nothing. If this project works well, we might be saving more than 500 euros annually in water lorries. Well, that's looking a bit better now. The idea is to be able to bring the wheelbarrow all the way to where the water pump house is. There is a main handicap, however, which is a stream that you need to jump over to get to the water pump house. In a future video, I will be building a metal bridge with concrete foundations over that stream, so stay tuned. But before building the bridge or fixing the roof or spending some extra money and effort, we need to see if the pump does work at all. Finally, we've reached the shed, so let's finish the work, because the pipe to the house might just be broken, so then everything is over. If you remember from last episode, we mounted the engine on the silent block. Now what we need to do is link the engine with the water pump and install the foot valve. This check valve is installed in the very beginning of the intake pipe, and it helps keep the pump primed and prevents the backflow from the downstream system. Sometimes the check valve is also installed in the pump's discharge, this system does have one here, although I've uh, cut it off for now as I think two check valves are too much of a head loss. You see what I'm trying to do is maximize the net pressure suction head available. I know that the required one is about 2 meters from the uh, manufacturer, but when I was restoring the pump the blades did have some sign of cavitation. I really don't want two check valves and even more. No water will be left in the pipes if I'm not operating the engine so it doesn't make sense. So now the system is almost ready for a test run, I only need to prime the pump with water and hopefully the foot valve will help uh, keep it primed. As you can tell the fuel valve is now open and I'm using the injector return line as my fuel gauge. The filter that you can see on the top is just a vent. Here I'm just performing a final inspection and making sure the engine has oil and let's go for the first run. As you can tell the engine has a free flow exhaust which is extremely noisy. But if the pump does work, we will be fixing this in a future episode. There is a pressure gauge in the discharge pipe. It's reading two bars now, although I know we will need almost seven at least. Because the height difference is about 60 meters, uh, you need to account for one bar per each 10 meters, plus the head losses of the fittings, the pipe and everything else. The engine vibrations are okay, although you can tell the starter vibrates a lot more and that's because the casing that it's mounted on is uh, broken for now. I haven't been able to weld it that well. And I need a bolt for that spinning clip. After 30 minutes the pressure gauge is reading almost 7 bars. There are no major leaks in the pump, so I think it's now time to go back to the house to check if the water deposits are filling up. So I'll leave this running, hope nothing explodes while I'm gone. Let's hope the 30 years old water pipe is not broken, fingers crossed. This thing is bloody noisy, it hurts without ear defenders. I can use the previous clip to calculate the RPMs of the engine. On average there's 37 milliseconds uh, between each explosion. The engine is a 4 stroke, so this gives about 3200 revolutions per minute, which is feasible. So I'm now back in the house, I can hear water running, although the deposit is not filling up, so something's wrong. Oh dear, I forgot to check if the end of the water pipe was in good condition, and now we have a situation here. The pump you see here is an electrical pressure pump, which is now full of water, and it shouldn't be on the outside. So obviously I had to drive back to kill the engine. I reckon we must monitor the engine from the house and from a smartphone should these problems occur again. I would like to keep an eye on the fuel level, the uh, throttle and probably the oil pressure as well and just basically have a system to be able to kill the engine at any time and anywhere. So finally we've uh, reached the shed, let's kill the engine. As you can tell there's a cloth on the oil cap, more on that later on the video. Now let's go back to the house and sort out that big mess. 
To drain all the water out, I drilled a hole in the wall. What a lovely day! As you can tell, the pressure pump feeds from two separate water deposits. This blue pipe is the one that comes from the pump, and you can see it has a hole, but that's not the main one. Oh dear, how didn't we spot that? There's a meter missing. But good news, the pump works, so who cares about this uh, little incident? We'll keep it between us. As you can tell, these two deposits are connected through communicating vessels. Right, so let's tackle the small hole first. So I will use this connector, which has a seal, and you just uh, bolt it on, and then I can cap it with this brass fitting. There was a valve here, I'm not sure why, so I've uh, removed it. So I'm using this drain pipe and this massive connector to fix it. It's not great, it's a T with a cap 10, but it will do the job. And this is the final result. I've used uh, PVC glue on that spot. So this pipe will now fill the water deposit I've shown you earlier. You can see the top opening from this little hole. Now everything is ready to restart the engine. So the pump is now running, everything is looking fine, we've got pressure, so let's go back to the house once again. Oh yes, that's looking better. The pump is rated at 7 cubic meters per hour, which is at 2 liters per second, which uh, seems about right for the flow we're getting. This is the other water deposit, which is filling up at the same rate, obviously. Let's have a look at the other water deposit. Oh, poor little fellow, I need to get him out. And the water is looking a bit oily. Ugh. But overall it was a success. The system works, now it just needs uh, some more TLC. Coming up in a future video. First of all, the exhaust. I bought on Amazon the silencer. It's pretty rough, the quality is not great, although it will do the job. The diameter is 30 millimeters, so I've bought this flexible tubing to accommodate it. The idea is bring the exhaust to the roof and put a muffler up there, as you can see in this drawing. So this uh, silencer will go on the inside of the shed and then I'll put this pipe and a muffler on top and probably the exhaust will be facing upwards to avoid animals. Inside the shed I'll wrap the exhaust with the ceramic insulator so we don't get burnt. And I'll give it a final wrap with this aluminium tape. I will use this exhaust sealing paste to avoid any leak. Next I will be installing an electrical priming pump. Let's have a look at this diagram. So you can see this is the pump's main body. This is the intake pipe, this is the foot valve we just installed, the water pond is here, this is the discharge, and it has two plugs, one here and another one here, I will put two valves, and I'll link them to an electrical pump that will uh, take broad water from the pond through the silicon pipe. This is the electrical pump I will be using, it's rated at 240 liters per hour, which is more than enough. Apart from the priming pump, I will also install another valve for the drain plug because now it basically drains on the floor and you need to use a wrench and it's just not convenient. What else have we got? So we have a lock for the door, some diesel injector cleaner, we have a couple of starters, I need to scavenge the solenoid from one of them. We have a new, brand new battery and we have uh, engine oil. This is the oil that the manufacturer recommended for my climate. It is a high detergent engine oil. Here's a clip starting the engine without a uh, working solenoid. The throttle itself is just a string now, so I've bought this proper thing from a lawnmower. The cable is pretty stiff, I like it. I would also like to install a torque damper using a shock absorber, but I need to sleep on it. Another problem I'm facing is that everything is full of oil. And this problem comes from the oil cap. As you can see, it's not sealed, it is vented. And at full throttle, it's just spilling out a lot of oil. And I don't know why. It shouldn't be spilling out oil, but well, you can see it's all full of it. So the plan is, I'm gonna change the oil, see if the viscosity was the problem. And if this doesn't fix it, I will check the oil pressure and we'll work from there. As you can tell, the floor needs redoing as well. I will put some plastic tiles or something. So, there's water up to the rim in the water deposits back in the house. So now the only thing that's left is to drain the pipes. So there's a valve here 
and this empties the whole system in the uh, pond. That's all for now, thanks for watching and stay tuned for episode 3.